good afternoon uh, i'll be talking about uh, valuable chemicals which we can recover from the cracker pie gas and the scenario which we already know integration of refinery and petrochemicals we may have excess naphtha and uh, the crackers could be mixed feed or liquid feed crackers they have high amount of c5 to c9 content in their uh, pie gas so for the slide gives an idea about uh, economic viability of various products uh, other than the primary products ethylene and propylene from the cracker based on the ethylene production capacity of the cracker um, this is an overall processing scheme wherein a gtc has uh, technology offerings right from uh, uh, gt isoprene gt c5 wherein you can produce uh, high quality isoprene for rubber industry uh, gt c5 gives some products like uh, pip uh, pipalines uh, dcpd which go for hydrocarbon resin production then uh, we have gt btx which is extractive distillation system uh, where we separate benzene toluene and xylenes with use of our proprietary uh, solvent tective family solvent then uh, we will also talk about gt styrene wherein uh, using uh, not taking the whole c6 to c8 cut uh, to gt btx for xylenes because in that case you will be hydrogenating the styrene to ethyl benzene and you will be degrading the quality of xylenes produced there so you can separate uh, c8 in a fractionation column uh, treat it uh, into gt styrene which is again an extractive distillation system based on a different solvent which will remove uh, xylenes and other uh, components from the styrene and you can get very high purity styrene which can go on for polymer industry then we will talk about uh, the heavies wherein uh, we we can produce resins and naphthalene okay so in c5 c5 cut of the pie gas uh, the main components which we focus on is isoprene with piperlines cpd which will be converted to uh, dcpd by dimerization and it all these products uh, are in less quantity maybe like uh, in the whole cut of pi gas you you may have 5% isoprene so but it is a very very valu valuable product and it it can make your naphtha cracker uh, quite Uh, competitive in competition with the gas crackers so uh, there are other components as well which we'll get from uh, we'll look at the flow sheet uh, that is we'll get isopentane which could be used for gasoline blending you will have c5 mo monolefins paraffins which can be recycled back to the cracker okay so from a c5 hard cut uh, this flow sheet uh the top uh, rightmost two blocks are gt isoprene unit and the other four uh, blocks which you see separation and uh, finishing of dcpd th those are gt c5 technology in gt c5 technology uh, what we do is uh, from c5 hard cut we uh, Uh, remove the lights we dimerize the bottoms of the first column uh, the reactor is uh, having multiple beds and it is tailor made for the feed specific feed and your requirement of dcpd purity uh, because in that reaction there will be many uh, co monomers forming and so uh, the multiple beds uh, lets you uh, like uh, decide what is the optimum uh, product quality and the uh, recoveries you want uh, then from first after the first dimerization reaction it again goes to uh, another distillation column which is c5 splitter uh, from top of c5 splitter you will uh, get isoprene which is a crude isoprene um, around 30% and then from bottom you will be having another dimerization reaction which is a finishing reaction for dcpd uh then you can separate uh, piperlines as well as dcpd
this is a flow sheet of GT isoprene technology. Uh, in GT C5, you have separation, wherein we know that uh, GTC has got an advantage of uh, using uh, advanced distillation solutions. We apply advanced distillation solutions when we have s a series of columns. We do heat integration as well as uh, advanced mass transfer, uh, wherein you, you can use a reboiler. Uh, reboiler of the first column by using the condenser of the s uh, sequential column. In uh, GT isoprene, uh, we have uh, the first step would be to remove the sulfur impurities, then production of uh, you have to remove acetylenes by selective hydrogenation. So this is a proprietary catalyst which will hydrogenate only acetylenes and uh, will not affect your isoprene uh, yields. Uh, after uh, removal of uh, acetylene, uh, this will be again going to an extractive system wherein a different solvent for specifically designed for isoprene uh, extraction is used. It will be a two column system uh, wherein uh, first column there will be a solvent coming from the top and uh, feed from the below which will be absorbed isoprene and uh, based on the temperature at the bottom, you could uh, achieve the purity you require for your isoprene. And the second column would be SRC, uh, which is a solvent recovery column or just a stripper, wherein the solvent is recovered back and fed to EDC. So all this would be heat integrated with, uh, uh, in the solvents uh, loop, you will have excess heat, which will be used as a reboiling for e EDC if the pressure temperatures permit. And then there will be a final finishing column wherein you can get a, a high quality isoprene, 99 point, more than 99.5% pure as a product. But these are uh, advantages of the technology. So uh, because of the uh, catalyst for dimerization, you will have improved DCPD dimerization, more yields, more recovery of uh, DCPD. Uh, Separation, as I told you, that uh, we are expert, experts in the distillation systems and extractive distillation systems. So uh, that is going to be the best available. Um, and your, you get uh, paper leans and DCPD for hydrocarbon resins production. So generally, C6 to C8 cut from this uh, uh, pi, from pie gas would uh, go to hydrogenation uh, wherein uh, in first stage you hydrogenate just the diolefins, olefins and then you remove the sulfur which later on goes for an uh, aromatic recovery unit which will be similar extractive distillation system uh, where you, and later on there will be post fractionation where it, you can separate benzene, toluene and xylenes. The solvent used for this separation would be Tective 500 uh, and this is comparison of liquid-liquid extraction with extractive distillation. So it is a more recent technology. It, is, it requires smaller and less number of equipments. It is lower capital cost, smaller plot area is required. Uh, the utility consumption is uh, uh, lower than the typical liquid-liquid extraction systems and it is simple to control with no corrosion issues. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the relative volatility of normal C7 with benzene. So in presence of different solvents compared to Tective 500. So it, it can be seen that the number of stages required as well as the duty required reduces drastically because uh, compared to other solvents, the delta in relative volatility is quite high. Uh, so uh, here we uh, saw that all C6 to C8 were going to hydrogenation. But uh, the new, uh, new new technology which we propose is to remove the 
uh, what happens in this is that uh, styrene gets hydro hydrogenated in the reactor and it forms ethyl benzene which goes into your xylene uh, flow and this drastically uh, changes the value which you get, get for your xylenes here. Uh, with high ethyl benzene content, content it would go as a solvent grade xylene wherein uh, by GT styrene what we can do is we can uh, remove the C8 hard cut from, uh, from the pi gas separately, uh, send it to GT styrene unit, wherein you can produce styrene with more than 99.8% purity. And then the refinate from this GT styrene could go back to the hydrogenator. And you will be able to recover xylenes here, which will be uh, paraxylene production grade material with high value. Other benefits of this, uh, of uh, having a GT styrene here is that you will have reduced the total flow going to your uh, reactors. So you have kind of debottlenecked your reactors. Your catalyst life is extended. Your hydrogen consumption has reduced. Plus you get a high value product. Styrene itself has got a high value and it also improves the value of xylene. Uh, so, in the first step for recovering styrene is the hydrogenation. Uh, this is also a special catalyst uh, which, which does a very uh, s selective hydrogenation so that ethyl benzene is not formed during this hydrogenation. Uh, when phenylacetylene is hydrogenated to styrene, you may get increased styrene in your product quantity than what was in the feed. So uh, the partial pressure of hydrogen uh, and the molar content of the uh, phenylacetylene is checked and accordingly we can have an addition of styrene in this system. Uh, this is the ASTM specifications for styrene product which could be matched uh, by uh, GT styrene unit. Okay. This is uh, approximate economics to uh, for GT styrene unit, which for 30 kta of styrene production. Uh, this would be from around 1000 KTA ethylene production cracker, uh, which will cost around 40 million USD. And uh, it has a high uh, return on investment of about 35%. Uh, there are six licensed units and three are in operation since many years. Mr. Shah, you have to conclude. So uh, this is a basic scheme of uh, uh, separating naphthalenes as well as producing uh, C9 feed for hydrocarbon resin. Okay. Uh, it's a compilation of all components, high value components, what is the typical capital cost as well as their payback in years. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you.